Hello and welcome to the Kingpin Crime YouTube channel. On today's video, he's a central and important figure in the Dublin underworld, who had associates in the Irish National Liberation Army and the IRA. His criminal career would eventually span over 50 years in total. John Trainer was born in 1948. His upbringing never suggested that he would lead a life of crime. Born on the 2nd of February, he would live on the edge of Dublin's south inner city. His parents worked and were relatively well off. The family moved to Clogger Road in Crumlin when Trainer was 10 years old, where he began to mix with youngsters who had ambitions to make their living from crime. He received his first criminal conviction in January 1961 and was sent to jail just a month later when he was given a one month sentence for larceny and housebreaking. Over the next five years he spent a total of 19 months behind bars for the same offences with the addition of robbery. His father was reportedly horrified with Trainer's behaviour and sent him to work at sea with the Irish shipping and B&I land when he was 15 years old. It would later result in a life-changing experience for him, but not in the way that his father had intended. At sea, Trainer met John Gilligan, a meeting that would prove to be fateful, with horrific consequences years later. He was later imprisoned for five years in December 1977 for possession of a firearm with intention to endanger life. A few days later, he was given another five years for ABH, burglary, larceny and common assault. Trainer was a heavy drinker and gambler and became an expert conman, dealing in stolen and counterfeit checks and bank drafts. He was also a skilled fencer of stolen goods and got to know all the main criminal players because he was laundering the proceeds of their robberies. His partners in crime were Frank Cunningham and Sean Fitzgerald. During the 80s, Trainer began to associate with Martin the General Cahill and the pair bought a pub together. He then became Cahill's trusted right hand man and consigliere, despite being brash, dapper and a loud mouth. In July 1983, Cahill, Trainer and nine others made off with gold and jewels worth an incredible two million pounds from the O'Connor's jewellery factory in Harold's Cross on Dublin's south side. It cemented Trainer's reputation as a highly intelligent criminal and made Cahill Ireland's gangster number one, unknowingly putting him on the collision course with the IRA that would have lethal consequences. When Trainer was jailed for fraud in the late 1980s, he met several major drug dealers. When he came out, he set himself up as a second-hand car dealer. But the coach, as he became known, also had the ambition to get into drugs and he teamed up with his old pal, John Gilligan. The pair were handed a £150,000 cash loan from Cahill to set themselves up and began to import hash smuggled through Dublin port in trucks. By the summer of 1994, they had reportedly imported more than a thousand kilos of drugs and had made profits of nearly £900,000 between them. As the money kept on rolling in, Cahill demanded his original investment back, plus an extra £350,000 and a percentage of future earnings. Instead of paying up, Trainer was accused in the underworld of approaching the IRA and the Irish National Liberation Army to set up Cahill to be killed. Trainer's vindictive side was again shown in February 1996 when he told John Gilligan that Martin the Viper Foley had been responsible for telling the IRA that the pair were dealing in heroin. The key lieutenant, Brian Meehan, had been interviewed by the IRA and Trainer persuaded Gilligan that the Viper would have to go. Meehan was dispatched to murder the Viper but botched the job and only managed to shoot Foley in the back and his little finger. Trainer was also a long-standing police informant who provided detectives with information about other criminals in order to be allowed to get on with his business in peace. He provided journalists with stories and was the main underworld source of the Sunday Independence Veronica Gurin, who nicknamed him the coach, and he expertly spun stories against friends and enemies alike, including Cahill, Foley, Jerry Hutch and Gilligan. Veronica's stories ruffled many feathers and in February 1995, she was shot in the leg at her home by a masked gunman. The police believed that Trainer may have pulled the trigger because he was under pressure in the underworld over rumours he was talking to the journalist. When she and the Sunday World began to turn their attention to Gilligan, 
from August 1995 onwards. He couldn't handle the publicity and viciously beat Gurin and threatened to kill her young son. She continued to talk to Trainer and fatefully let it slip that she was due in district court on June the 26th of 1996. Trainer knew Gilligan wanted the journalist dead, but still tipped him off about where she would be. The mother of one was shot as she sat in her car at traffic lights on a dual carriageway by Eugene Holland on Gilligan's orders. The trainer has always denied any involvement in the murder. Police wanted to question him, but he fled the country to Amsterdam, where he ran the Hungry Goat Bar with his partner. He continued to lead a life of crime in the Netherlands, with Dutch police believing he was involved in the importation of cannabis to Ireland and also offered shelter to Irish criminals. His crimes caught up with him in 2010 when he was arrested by Dutch police and extradited to the UK to serve the remainder of his seven year sentence from the 1992 handling of four million pounds worth of stolen bank bonds. He served his sentence in the medium security High Point prison and had several heart attacks resulting in a triple heart bypass operation. He was released in September 2016 and moved to a seaside town in Kent with his partner. Trainer is kept below the radar, paranoid that journalists will track him down. He's also fearful that police might try to prosecute him for the murder of Veronica Guerin. This concludes the story of John the Coach Trainer. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.